It's Kicking It Live with Jessica Stelzer, Jen Gomez, Will Reynolds, Maria Manessi, Annie Ranke, Ava Toll, Max Buckley, Ellie Hartram, Alex Chris, Tad Fountain, Sydney Lake, Garrett Jepson, Rebecca Murray, Peter Zelnick. Happy Friday, guys. Coming up, we explore honors passes, flipping around gymnastics, libros de espanol, and the famous Popeye's chicken sandwich. As temperatures are dropping, concerns about climate change within our school are on the rise. Today, during fifth period, there will be a climate rally by the flagpole in the front courtyard. If you have fifth period lunch, you will not be given an attention. If you have a class during that period, you will likely get one. But ask your teacher prior to fifth period to check. Although missing a class in general can be stressful, honor students were given honors passes this year in addition to the AP IB passes that have been given out previous years to help, with, to help relieve the stress of coursework. Ellie Hartramp takes a look. At the high school, teachers who teach honors AP or IB classes are given honors passes. These passes are implemented by Cynthia Ballheim, AP IB coordinator. I sat down with her so she could explain more what they are. So they're kind of like a get out of jail card um, so that if a student um, has not informed their teacher something has come up, it could be something as a dog has died, a family emergency of some sort that comes up, this gives them a one day delay on any test. It can't be a group project, um, but it is only a one day delay. Even though given to all honors teachers, some decide not to pass them out to their students. Um, most of my teachers have uh, referenced the honors passes, and they haven't given them out because most of them are flexible with their late policies. Teacher Melissa Haynes gives her students a choice. The honors passes I give students a choice for taking in my class. They can either talk with me about a due date for a project and ask for more time, or I can give them in the past and they can have one day late on one assignment. I don't necessarily utilize the uh, late passes or the honors passes because I feel comfortable talking to my teachers, but for the students who don't, I feel like they might be beneficial in that sense. Despite popular belief, Cynthia Balheim clears the air on the honors passes. It is not in any way meant to replace talking with the teacher and coming up with some alternative measures, um, but it is for those one-time events that come up, so of course they wouldn't be used that often. This has been Ellie Hartramp reporting for the WARL. With exams approaching, stress is increasing. If you have not received your honors pass, talk to your teacher about their late policy. Next week is Computer Science Education Week. Throughout the day on Monday, there will be an hour of code contests in the Active Learning Lab. Students are invited to the ALL during their free periods on Monday to participate. Gift cards are being awarded as prizes, so it could also be a free way to earn a holiday gift to give to someone else or to enjoy yourself. And now I flip it over to Ellie and Rebecca with sports. Hey Bears, welcome to sports. Boys basketball has their first game of the season tonight when they go head-to-head -head against Central Crossing at 7.30. The game is away. Basketball girls had their first game of their season on November 22nd and won against Pickerington North 50-39. On December 3rd, the Lady Bears lost against Dublin Kaufman, making their record 1-2. They have a game tonight in the Varsity Gym against Central Crossing. Tip-off is at 7.30 p.m. Wrestling has their first meet tonight at 7 p.m. against Dublin Scioto in Centerville. The matchup is at Hastings Middle School. The Lee Spitzer Golden Bear Invitational is tomorrow at 10 a.m. Boys and Girls Swimming and Diving Bears have their first dual meet of the season tonight against Olentangy Orange at 7.30 p.m. and tomorrow against Olentangy Liberty at 1.30 p.m. Prior to this meet, the teams only had inner squad meets where all Americans from last season were announced. The gymnastics team has been working to prepare for this season. Maria explores the team and their goals for the season. The Upper Arlington gymnastics team has been practicing multiple times a week in preparation for the upcoming season. 
Not having access to the freshman gym has had an impact on this team. Normally we host all of our competitions in the freshman gym, so not having access to that really sucks this year. But um, we will now host only one meet this season and it will be at UGI. Although this has been an obstacle for the team, they are hoping for another successful season this year. Um, I'm really looking forward to defending our two-year title of OCC Championships as well as um, getting to meet all the freshmen. Meeting a lot of my new teammates and we left off in a really good spot last year at District. So I'm hoping to pick right back up where we got and hopefully go to States this year. This has been Maria Vanessi reporting for the WAL. They will have their first meet of the season on November. They will have their first meet of the season Wednesday, December 11th at Worthington Kilbourne at 6.30. On November 23rd, the, ho the boys hockey bears had their first game versus Olentangy Berlin and the bears took home the win 4-0. The team is currently undefeated with a record of 6-0. The hockey bears have a game tonight against Archbishop Muller and then tomorrow will face our rivals St. Charles at 4 p.m. Player of the week goes out to Garrett Olderman for having 18 saves in the game against O'Connell. That's all for sports this week. And now to Max and Jen with Community News. Community News. And welcome to December. To kick it off is the Winter Festival at the Mallway on Arlington Avenue. The festival is tonight from 6 to 8.30. The Parks and Recreation event includes visits from Santa and his reindeer, <laughs> carriage rides, and carols from your Upper Arlington schools. The Civic Association is also in the holiday spirit with our celebration of Christmas in the park. Sydney will have a closer look on the story next week. Also on the show next week, the Greater Organization for Leadership and Democracy, or the Gold Club, will be drawing raffle winners. The raffle will benefit the Mid-Ohio Food Bank, and there are five $25 gift cards, including UA Rise, Amazon, Visa, Target, and Bath and & Body Works. You can buy tickets for $1 during lunch periods across from the main office. Giving Tuesday was just two days ago. This International Day of Charitable Giving kicked off the holiday season by encouraging people and organizations to transform their communities for the better. Hmm, Max. That reminds me of some of our Spanish students who went to Windermere a few weeks ago. Here's more on the story. On November 14th, students in the Spanish Honor Society and Spanish 3 got on a bus and headed to Windermere Elementary School. Riley Keene was one of these students. We came to Windermere and read Spanish-related books to a couple of the classes and taught them vocab and um, asked what they knew about Spanish and what they had already learned. Senor Hayes, a Spanish 3 teacher who coordinated the event, reflects and shares about the experience. Students got the opportunity to read to Windermere students, grades 1 through 3. Um, they were participating in a program that's called Global Read Aloud, where students have the opportunity to get exposed to Spanish by means of Mexican-American artists and authors. We hope that this experience was meaningful for students who went over there, as our goal is always to expose kids to Spanish, but also have them get involved in the community uh, outside. This has been Jen Gomez reporting for the WARL. If you know someone who gives back this time of year and year-round, nominations for the 2019 Community Awards are open through January 6th. Head to the UpperArlingtonOhio.gov website for more information. That's it for Community. Now back to Maine. Is it that time of month again? If so, you're in luck. You may have noticed the new Aunt Flo dispensers being added to the women's restrooms in the school. The dispensers have free tampons and pads made of 100% organic cotton to use as needed. The company, Aunt Flo, who created the dispensers, are dedicated to making sure everyone has access to free menstrual products across the globe to relieve the stress of the sometimes unexpected. For every 10 menstrual products purchased, one is given to a person in need. Community School is hosting a white elephant eat together from 6 to 8.30 p.m in the West Cafeteria on Tuesday. The event is open to the entire UAHS community. If you plan to attend RSVP to a community school student or teacher and bring a small joke gift. The gift should be something that you already have at home or that you'd like to re-gift to somebody else. Attendees are also asked to bring a favorite food to share. Speaking of favorite foods, the internet goes crazy over the new Popeye's chicken sandwich that came back on sale a few weeks ago. Tad Fallon and Max Buckley takes a closer look. The sandwich that took the nation by storm is back after two months of waiting. After selling out in the first two weeks of release, the Popeye's sandwich made a return on November 3rd, which is also National Sandwich Day. Many people claim this sandwich to be the best out of all the fast food chains. Uh, it's pretty similar to like uh, Kane's chicken sandwich and Chick-fil-A's chicken sandwich, uh, but what like makes it different is like the, uh, the chicken crispy. I wouldn't say it's worth stabbing someone, but it's a pretty good sandwich. We are currently in line awaiting the re-release of the Popeye's Chicken Sandwich. The 
The Popeye sandwich features a buttermilk battered and breaded white meat filet topped with pickles and a choice of mayo or spicy Cajun spread and served on a toasted brioche bun. This has been Max Buckley and Tad Fountain reporting for the WARL. Popeye's chicken sandwich will only set you back $3.99 and you can get spicy or original. The closest location is on Bethel Road. Another option for lunch if you plan on staying is in is Fusion. It is now back on Tuesdays in the West Cafeteria during 4th and 5th periods. Make sure to pick up a ticket in the line before getting your sushi. There are a few spots open for any interested juniors or seniors to attend the New York City broadcasting trip. For information, packets can be found in the WARL. Tuesday is the last day to sign up. Talk to one of us or on the Kick It staff or Mrs. Fallon for more information. Seniors presenting their capstones on Monday and teachers assessing capstone presentations Monday are invited to stop by the Loyal Theater after school day for a quick session. Next week for our holiday show, we will look at fun-filled winter activities. Have a great weekend, Bears. See you next week.